let us pray. Father, we thank you. We commit this word before you, O Jehovah God, that my Father, I will not speak it with the eloquence of man, but I pray that the Holy Spirit will speak this word through me, even inside me, even for me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that Holy Spirit, we shall become changed, transformed, maturing for your own glory and honor. Teach us, Lord, we are seated at your feet this morning. We give you glory in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Amen. So last week we talked about Jesus and one of the characteristics of Jesus was submitting to God's will. Submitting to God's will. And if you go to our YouTube channel, you will check what are the benefits of submission. Today we want to talk about several things. I pray that we shall have time. We don't have time. We'll do it next Sunday. So this one is Jesus Christ was selfless. Jesus Christ was selfless. Philippians 2, 5 to 8 has been our anchor. Actually, Philippians 2, 5 to 11 is our anchor scripture during this time. Selfless means setting out to offer help with no ulterior motive. Setting out, setting out, setting out to assist others with no ulterior motive. It means that if I assist you, I don't have to keep checking you and saying, if it was not for me, you know, I'm the one who got her that job. She has never come back with a, with a bag of sugar to say thank you. That is the African way of doing things. That is the human way of doing things. But the character of Jesus is selfless. He was selfless. He was concerned more with the needs of others than himself. He was concerned with a dying world than his own comfort in heaven. And that's why he came on earth. We are learning that selfless is putting our comfort aside. Our comfort aside. Putting our comfort aside. If you want to serve God, you will not serve God until you become selfless. Because God is going to disrupt your comfort. God is going to disrupt your life. God is going to make sure that he is waking you up at midnight hour to pray for Ukraine and they don't even know you. Hallelujah. So we have to learn to be like Christ, to be selfless. Philippians 2, 5 to 8, the Bible says, you must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to Christ and died a criminal's death on a cross. Jesus has shown us the ultimate servanthood. Selflessness goes together with servanthood. Mark 12 and verse 3. Mark 12 and verse 3. I'm praying that every time as we are teaching, including myself, keep looking at your life. How is your walk with Christ? Are you submitted to God? Are you selfless? Or you must always give. Only come a pastor anaku bariki. You see yourself less. Hallelujah. Mark 12 and verse 3. But the farmers grabbed the servant, beat him up, and sent him back empty handed. Am I correct? Am I is that Mark? Yes, servanthood. Let me let me first of all take you to the correct part of the story of the Good Samaritan. Sorry. Luke 10, 30 to 35. Luke 10, 30 to 35. Selflessness. 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 Sometimes I give them Mark instead of Mark. It's supposed to be Matthew. I've never understood how I do that. But it is well in the name of Jesus Christ. The story of the Good Samaritan. A priest passed by this man. The Bible says Jesus replied with a story. A Jewish man was traveling on a trip from Jerusalem to Jericho and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up and left him half dead beside the road. Continues to say by chance a priest came along. This is Pastor Karu. 
But when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. Hallelujah. See, I mean, it's a priest. Who is the priest? Who are the priests in this house? One? Uh, 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 oh, higher. So, the Bible says, a temple assistant walked over and looked at him lying there. But he also passed by on the other side. So, how many people have passed first here? The priest and the temple. This, this man, the temple one, go back. The temple guy, I'm thinking, must have been protocol running to take care of the priest. Because he had to go and open the doors. You see, he was a temple assistant. What does that mean? He had an assignment in charge. It was a good assignment, isn't it? But for you to be selfless, there are times you have to put things aside so that you do the things that matter. Hallelujah. You do the things that matter. So you're also going to do something good. And he looked at this guy and said, by the time I bandage this guy, the church will have started, my pastor will be calling on me. So I have to, I have to move then came somebody called a despised Samaritan. When I looked at this word, I remembered the time there was Garissa attack. Garissa attack when they, they attacked the university. And uh, where I was in charge, I volunteered for the first time. You know me, I like confessing. I had never volunteered before. I volunteered for the first time to go to Chiromo to minister to the parents and the families that came. When I arrived there, as by the time we were organizing, so we are good at organizing how those things are done. By the time we were organizing, we went like the fourth day or third day. The people we found there were the despised Samaritans. Are we together? We found the Hindus were already there. They were already bringing trucks and trucks of food. By the time our pastor was trying to tell people to give so that we tried to take something there, Anyway, I don't know if they, they gave. Let me not cheat. But we were now helping to distribute the things from the Hindus. But as far as I'm, but we are saying we are changing. See, we are changing. We are changing. Because, you know, when I went there and people needed prayer, they needed just walking with them. And, you know, it was just one of those things. And until I said, God help me, I don't do volunteer again. It was, if you're weak-hearted, it can be very traumatizing. It was not easy. So we need to arise to become selfless. We are saying we need to become like Jesus Christ. So some people cannot be beating us to these kind of things. Amen? So this despised Samaritan is the one who arrived there and he decided, he said, he's going to bandage this guy. He bandaged, he did not even ask his tribe. Hallelujah. Wa Kenya mpo? Kabisa. He did not ask the tribe. Akuuliza. We are metoka side gani. He bandaged his wounds. He took him to an inn. He paid his bill. Selflessness goes together with mercy and compassion. Mercy and compassion. We need to be compassionate, a compassionate people. That is who Jesus was. Philippians 1.17 Philippians 1.17 Paul was advising and Paul was telling people, please don't do anything just to advance your own agenda. The church cannot become a politician. The church cannot do what? You cannot do things so that people can see you, so that people can be mentioning that you do these things. That is not the church. The church must be selfless. The Bible says, those others do not have pure motives as they try to preach about Christ. They preach with selfish ambition not sincerely intending to make my chains more painful to me. They were just trying to advance their own agenda. Joshua was selfless. When Joshua went and took the children of Israel to Canaan and divided for them plots, what were brought him? Divided for them. He divided for himself last selflessness. When you are selfless, you come in last. You come in last. As I thought about this, I thought about our parents. When we, we used to be many, you know, most of us were born like this staircase. Eh? So when a parent used to share the food, did, he use, did your parent used to have your, their, their plate before you us? The first of all used to feed the children and then they, and I thought, yes, our parents were selfless and we didn't see that one. Our children, were, our parents were what? They were selfless. Joshua 1949. Selflessness, you come in 
last. Your agenda is last. But you know, I keep praying for Kenyans, especially drivers. Bwana sifuwe sana. Ii mambo ya kukata watu. Ili toka wapi. You know, that's the only thing that will take many, many of you will not go to, you will not go to heaven. I am saying it. Because you are driving and somebody just needs to cut in front. Why now? Kwanza women. Bwana sifuwe sana women. I have been observing. You know, from the time I got very saved about, now I no longer cast people on the road. I'm becoming a good pastor. I don't do it. In fact, I just say, Father, thank, thank you because of that one. Lakini mungu umweke tu pale mbele, tu kutane tu. So I no longer insult. I no longer say anything bad. I just, I swallow. I pray then I say, lakini ya siende mbali san. Ni mpata tu wapo. Na mimu wapata tu wapo wa Kenya. And that time you have just cut me like you want. Praise Jesus. Selflessness means you give way on the we are 80% Christians. Doesn't it mean that, that we should be behaving? Our behavior should show. Yani, somebody should come and say there's something different about this nation. Even when I'm driving, they just give way. They just allow you. And now let me speak to the young ones. Young people. I am so grateful that 95% of all of you here are very, very young. When you're meeting with an older person, when you look at me, I'm older. When I'm older. See, I'm older than most of you. I'm actually, I always say it's only one man who is older than me. But the others, all of you are children. All of you are what? See, what I'm talking about. When I meet with you and I'm older, what you do do? You give what? You know, I happen to work in an institution where hope is. Every time we pass each other with young people, I feel like stopping them to preach to them the gospel. Because you see, these are young men coming, like five of them, and I'm coming and I'm alone. I'm the one who steps aside to allow them pass. Is that selflessness? Young people, for this ministry, for this what? For this and those who came to listen today. Eh? Start giving way, selflessness, and they go together with good manners. Hallelujah. They do what? When we are growing up, there are some things we are taught also. When you find an older person carrying things, what were we taught? There's another thing we were taught. When we entered a matatu, as we used to be in those matatus where you face each other, you, you know, if an older person comes, even if you have paid, what are you required to do? What happened after that? Nimelipia mtoto wangu. Yes, I have paid. Yes, rights came in. Let me tell you, we keep saying in this ministry, when you're a child of God, you have no rights. The only rights you have are the rights of Jesus Christ, of what he did. That's the only thing you do what? You have. Hallelujah. So we say when you're selfless, your things come last. When I was Googling about selflessness, there are three names that came up very seriously. Martin Luther. Who can give me another name? Mother Teresa. Another one? Mahatma Gadi. Another one? Nelson Mandela. Another one? Mother Teresa. Okay, another one is Abraham Lincoln. I read about Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. I think he's the one who tried to, he's the one who tried to help the, the equality of blacks. He, he did it? Yes, we have an encyclopedia works around here. So my work is very, my work is very simple. He's saying that Abraham Lincoln is the one who tried to abolish slavery in America. When I looked at these names, there were less Christian names of selflessness, and there were more names, Mother Teresa, Mahatma Gadi, eh? those sides. Yeah. The only one was Martin Luther. You need to become selfless like Jesus. We are discussing the character of Jesus Christ. That's what we want to become. Hallelujah. And we say that you must become what Jesus was. Let us see. Mark 10, 45. Oh, I got the right scripture. Mark 10, 45. Is it there? For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus Christ came. Selfless, selfless. 
selfless. We see reality shows where they say they want somebody who is a billionaire to go and start staying in, uh, let's say, Mukuru, and then they follow with TVs, and then he goes there and he's crying the way. First of all, the first day it's okay, then the second day he wants a pizza, but no, they can't afford. That is a reality show, and it is fake. Hallelujah. It is done for you, for you to start thinking that you're different or you are less. You are not. You are a powerful human being. Hallelujah. It says, for even the Son of Man came out not to be, but to. So even you, you are supposed to be what? A servant. You're supposed to be what? A servant. We studied the other day, the Bible was saying that servants obey your masters. It is not about slavery. It is about a Christian. You are a servant. You must do what? Obey your masters. Hallelujah. Let us see Matthew 5, 45. Selfless. Selfless. Selflessness. Selflessness. I pray that I become selfless. I pray that I serve selflessly. It says, in that way you'll be acting as true children of your Father in heaven, for he gives sunlight to both the evil and the go and the good and he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. I'm trying to understand which scriptures are this I was giving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you blessed by that one? Mbarikiotunayo. Sits in the scriptures. Hallelujah. Jesus was disrupted. When you're selfless, you are disrupted. You will be disrupted as long as you're a child of God. As long as you're a child of God. Another characteristic of Jesus Christ is humility and meekness. Humility and meekness. The Bible says, uh, I, 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 I just studied what humility is. Humility means showing modesty. Not proud. Not pompous. Not lording it over others. Humility means not proud. Humility means showing modesty, not pump, pompous, 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 not loading it over others. It means polite, polite. Humility means you tend to consider yourself as having no special importance that makes you better than others. So when you come here, you don't look at your suit and say, my suit is better than the pastor's. Mm -mm. You start looking at the shoe of your neighbor and say, mm, in nearly a 50 bob. Yango, my friend, in it were clerks. Huh? Tending to consider yourself as having no special importance that makes you better than others. I told you my life about when I went to become a director somewhere. And then I had never been a director. So the first time when we went, we were put in very big Prados. And those Prados had lights like this. And uh, when we were going, we were on, uh, what do you call that? Elaine uh, throat. No, no, we had signs, but uh, thank you. See Jesus, thank you. Now there's another encyclopedia. When one is not here, we shall be looking this aside. Hallelujah. Yes? So what was happening is that we are going with hazard throughout. By the way, there was no pause. We are not pausing. Tumufatanaizi magari kama kumbi hivi. Prados are black. By the way, it's black. There's something about black and superiority. Wache kutuambia vitu zingine. Bana sifia sana. So we were overtaking guys, my friend. Eish. Do you know I started feeling it? I could feel. Ha! Jesus, I was saying, oh my God, is this the president feels? No wonder they are fighting for this position. I had never known why they fight. Hey, my friend, guys, we were, move my friend. Guys who are passing, guys who are passing. So whether you like it or not, you start feeling a bit like you. You even feel a little bit taller than others. We were on a quick mission. Yes, we were on a quick mission. So lunch. Praise Jesus. Buenas <laughs> sana. Tending to consider yourself as more important or special than others. Spirit of pride, you are not humble. You are not what? You are not humble. When Jesus came, we keep calling him Jesus Christ. Do you call him Apostle Jesus Christ? 
Archbishop Jesus Christ. Prophet Jesus Christ. Uh, and now us, if you fail to call me pastor, the anointing will dissipate around there. You must address me right. Huh? Now we are saying there are things like positions. Praise Jesus. You can call somebody a position of just honor, but we shall not, we should not be demanding. We shall not, we should not be demanding of those titles. Matthew 18, verse 1 and verse 4. With humility comes repentance. People who are not humble do not see their problem. They do not see their issues. They don't understand what you are saying. Have you ever met people who say, this person is very proud? When I was thinking about uh, this man who is bombing Ukraine, I asked Joyce, I said, doesn't he have a mentor? Because you know, a mentor is one who can call you and tell you what you're doing is wrong. And I thought, actually, I don't think he has. Now if you are the president of Russia, who can be your mentor? Nobody can call you to tell you what you're doing is wrong. And, and I just thought, anybody who is proud, they cannot agree to submit. They know. Wamejua mamemaliza encyclopedia. Bwana sifuye sana. Let's see. About that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And verse 4, what does it say? Jesus, okay, let's go on. Just continue. Just continue. Let's go verse 2. Let's go verse 2. It's okay. Jesus called a little child to him and put the child among them. Then he said, I tell you the truth, and unless you turn from your sins and become like little children, you will never get into the kingdom of God. If you're not humble, you're not seeing heaven. I don't have to prophesy. You are going nowhere. Anyone who becomes as humble as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Children are humble. You know, all adults are the ones who start getting. See, I've told you the reason why me, I was feeling like that. Yeah, I was feeling like that. I told you the way I used to land and then the security are all over calling me those names. Ah, and I discovered that just the walk from the parking to the office, like even, the, even the walking style had changed. <laughs> I had to pray. I'm serious. So be very careful because pride doesn't come like loudly. Don't think that pride is just going to come like, I'm here, I'm pride. No, no, no. Pride comes even the way you look down on people, the way you relate with people. You know, there are some people you want to greet you, the others you want to hug you, the others you want to keep a bit at arm's length, please. I don't know what perfume they are having today. That is how pride comes. Watch out. Pride comes lacking very slowly. When it lands, you don't even know. With humility comes repentance. God opposes the proud. It's a very big word. Opposes the proud, but lifts the humble. He lifted Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ was humble. Reference is Philippians 2, 5 to 11. James 4, verse 6. God resists, opposes, opposes. So if there are things that are not working around you, because we have been talking about our characters, just go and check. Just go and check where it is that you may be walking in pride. You may be walking proudly because God is surely going to properly oppose you. The Bible says, but he gives us even more grace to stand against such evil desires. As the scriptures say, God opposes the proud but favors the humble. When you are humble, you can be used as a vessel of honor. When you are humble, you can be relied on. With humility comes deliverance. Second Chronicles 7, 13 to 15. You know about it when my people who are called by my name, isn't it? Yes. But let's put it there. Humility and meekness. Humility and meekness. It says, at times I might shut up the heavens so that no rains fall, falls or command grasshoppers to devour your crops or send plagues among you. 
Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sins and I'll restore their land. Just leave it right there. Go back. I want us to look up so that we see this. It says, my people, when they turn from their wickedness, if they humble themselves, so the first thing is to humble yourself. It is only when you humble yourself, you can even pray. You see, if you have everything, why would you start praying? Why would you humble yourself? Yeah? So if we humble ourselves before the Lord, this is what is going to happen. God hears from heaven. God forgives your sin. God restores your land. Every time you see what we are seeing in this nation, the spirit of pride is all that is hanging around our heads. When you see these things, the hashtags, okay, that one. When you start here seeing those hashtags, just humble yourself. This is the scripture. It's saying if you humble yourself, God is going to hear from heaven. He's going to forgive your sins. And he's going to Exactly. So there is nothing like the government trying to help you with the, the hashtags. Anyway, I hear the hashtag lasted two days. Now we are back. We are now hashtagging Putin. Yeah? So we need to walk. Walk deliberately, very deliberately. Walk in humility. Walk in humility. This is what happens to you when you are humble. Proverbs twenty-two fourteen. The first one is with humility comes deliverance. With humility comes deliverance. That one I gave you, 2 Chronicles 7, 13 to 14. With humility comes deliverance. Proverbs 22, verse 4. The mouth, verse 4, please. The humility and fear of the Lord. Let us read. Let us read. We have said, as we are wise, we have discovered very many scriptures. We don't have to go and do so many things. All we need is to be aligned to who Christ is and what he does. These things shall follow us, chasing after us, overtaking us. Hallelujah. You shall see. You shall be here and you will see. It says, true humility and fear of the Lord lead to? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those are already three points for you. Riches. Honor and long life. Humility. Humility. Proverbs 11 verse 2. Proverbs 11 verse 2. Hallelujah. Proverbs 11 2. Pride leads to disgrace. But with humility comes wisdom. That's another point for you. With humility there is a reward of wisdom. Proverbs 3.34 Proverbs 3.34 Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord mocks the mockers, but is gracious to the humble. Other versions say that you receive favor. You receive favor. So that's another point. Proverbs 3.34 You receive favor. 1 Peter 5, 6. 1 Peter 5, verse 6. So I've said you receive deliverance. You receive riches, honor, and long life. You receive wisdom. You receive favor. And now you receive exaltation. 1 Peter 5, verse 6. So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God. And at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. Everybody who is looking for elevation, everybody who is looking for promotion, all you need to do, humble yourself. For some of us who work or have worked in institutions, we know that sometimes bosses are asked, who do you want to send in a particular place? Huh? Yes. So you miss out. You miss out because of your character. You miss out on a lot of things. You know everything we have is in somebody else's hand. But if you go there very pompous, show you like you don't need them. Me, I only need Jesus. I only need God. I pray 10 hours a day. Ha. Uh, keep waiting for promotion. That person is the one who is going to say, 
the person you need to promote is so and so. I have known their character. They are humble. Amen? Amen. Meekness. Is humble also meek? When you are humble, are you also meek? Let me give you the difference of those two words. A humble person can be meek. But these words are not the same. They are similar, but they are not the same. Meek means strength under control. Strength under control. Strength under control. Okay? That is what it means. I already gave you the, the meaning of humility. Meekness means strength under control. Meekness does not mean weakness. A meek person is humble, is teachable, and has long suffering. Isaiah 53, verse 7 to 9. A meek person is a humble person. But it's because they have decided to put their power and authority under control. The Bible says God himself loves the humble and they shall inherit the earth. But let's first of all see Isaiah 53 verse 7 to 9. It says he was oppressed and treated harshly. This is Jesus Christ. Remember we are saying we want to change and become more like the character of Jesus Christ. He says he was oppressed and treated harshly, yet he never said a word. Remember, he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And then he was told, he told them, you know what? I can order, I can order legions of angels to come and deal with this mat, but I will not do so. Meek. He says he was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep is silent before the shearers. He did not open his mouth. So this time I have been praying for my mouth. You know, because, you, you know, if you don't learn a lot of these things, you think it is okay. It is okay. Hakietu, it is okay. But as a Christian, you must seek the Holy Spirit about when it is to say, Haki yet You must seek from the Lord. Jesus Christ would have done it differently, but he had an assignment. Remember from last week, he had to submit to the will of God. Now you have seen his character, humility and meekness. He had power, but he chose not to use it. He chose not to use it. The meek will inherit the earth. The meek will inherit the earth. Matthew 5, 5. Shetari mamazi bazaar. Reba Baba Zika Tarabaza. Oh, Rima Mama Zika Reba Shanta Rimaza. It says, God blesses those who are, in other versions, is meek, for they will inherit the whole earth. God cannot give the earth to proud people. Let me give you a very good definition of the difference between meekness and humility. Meekness is behavior towards others. And humility is an attitude to oneself, but others can see. If you are humble, we shall see. When we were growing up, there were people who used to work with something used to call academic angle. I don't know if it's still there nowadays. It used to be just showing that you have really been in the library. Is it nowadays there? Oh, it's no longer there. It died. Yeah, but you know, it used to be those people who are shining in maths. They used to work with an academic angle. Yeah, to, to show that they have really been studying. So when somebody is proud, you don't even need to prophesy. You just see. You even hear somebody saying, so and so is so proud. And maybe you've not even experienced them for long. You experience them for two minutes and you're already able to tell this about So meekness Meekness is a behavior towards other people. It's a behavior towards other people. But humility is an attitude to oneself, but others can see it. Others can see it. I close by saying this, God resists the proud. If Jesus was proud, he would not have, if Jesus decided to be proud, he would have said, you know, I'm the son of God. I am not going down there. And you know, he knew that we would still resist him. We would still refuse him. 
Yet after, after dying to coming to dine on, on the cross for, for our own sins. Proverbs 16, 18. Proverbs 16, 18. I'm closing. Father, I thank you. I pray that, Lord, you help me to walk in meekness and humility. And to submit to you, Lord, to walk, to be selfless. Hallelujah. Pride goes before destruction and haughtiness before a fall. Don't be proud. Don't allow God to resist you. The people say that even Nivile and Iliubwa, and there's nobody who is created proud. Are we together? There is nobody who has done what? Tell your neighbor. Tell them clearly. Yes, there is nobody. You know, one of the things we like saying is, There are some things, first of all, Christians, the reason why we are learning this about transformation is because there are some statements we don't want to be hearing. I thought you have already gone. I thought you've already joined uh, the kingdom. Yes, you are a citizen of heaven. You are in the kingdom of God. So the kingdom of your father does not count. So when you tell them, sis, to cohive you, nini na nani? Because na yeye ni sis, mimi na Yesu. Amen. Didn't we teach about that? Mimi na yeye na Yesu. So if Jesus is not proud, where are you getting yours from? Una unatoa yako hapi? At mimi na kuwa anifanya tu yote na atajua. Atajua mimi pali ni metoka. Then others say even it is their tribes. Wacha ni sisi me which tribes? Hiyo na sema mimi sisi kwe tu vile tunakuaga. Proverbs 29, 23. Now I am telling you, you are in the kingdom of God. We are we serve in humility. We serve in meekness. We are selfless. Hallelujah. We are, where he tells us to go is where we go. We don't engage. Pride ends in humiliation. You will be humiliated, my friend. I'm praying seriously for uh, August 9th. I'm praying for August 9th. And I'm, I'm still in the spirit with that scripture. I am praying for August 9th. Because the Lord will be on the side of the humble. Because the Lord cannot stand pride. Pride ends in humiliation. While humility brings honor. Humility brings honor. So think about yourself. Why aren't you getting promoted? Why aren't you getting promotion in your office? Eh? I know somebody else the other day was trying to give me a testimony the way I saw me a bossyake. I just looked at her and said, it's okay. Eh? She's a Christian. She said, I'm so mea. A kajua. You're sick. I think it's called Kaende. Oh, Kaende, Kaende. Oh, my Jesus. The things I will learn here. Kaende, Kaende. That's what he told me. Kaende, Kaende. I didn't even know that one. Eh? Oh, come on, bye, bye. Oh, okay. Oh, my God. That's what, she, that's what she told me. She was giving me a testimony. And because she's not in this ministry, I had to keep quiet. You see, if it is any of you, I would sit you down and give you scriptures. About the spirit of pride. Yeah? Humility. Humility can cost you a lot because you're feeling, you're feeling it. You're feeling you're oppressed and you are suppressed, but the Lord is telling you, keep. Keep. As I close. Um, one of my daughters was sent away from school some years ago, many years ago. And my children, because I'm a good disciplinarian, they don't get sent away from school. So this one was sent away from school and uh, I went back to school. And let me tell you, those are the times you go saying, Atanio. So when I went this, I was being told that they, such, they have torn blouses for a prefect. And so all these children are sent away for a whole week. We went back to school. And when we went back to school, uh, you know, they are there. I'm, I'm, I'm asking my daughter, did you do it? She told me no. She's not the one with here. That's why she's laughing. So, did you do it? No. You are sure you didn't do it? No. I said, let's go back. We went back and then I me, mean, I'm, I'm there. I'm thinking my daughter is, who thinks their children is bad? Hakuna. So I, I was there and then uh, we were told everybody is writing who they think did this. So I tell my daughter, who do you think did? She said I was asleep. But I could see their friends writing names. 
Am I writing? Yeah. So we were thinking, now who are they writing? So when our turn came, we went to the teacher and then the teacher said, um, said, uh, by the way, so and so, where is your, she said, my mother has taught me not to lie. So I was asleep and I did not see who tore those blouses. Then the teacher turned to many pages like this. She said, hmm. okay, this is what the teacher did. Okay, one of the things I do because I have been working on my own character and working on my own, uh, what do you call your kuwa juu sana? Ile ya kukasirika sana. So things of school, we sent Pastor Karu. And so that he can come and see what the teacher said. Because when I go there, and the problem is I was already, there was a, a, a perception of where I come from. I come from this side of uh, Mount Kenya, that side. So I, I, we have agreed, we agreed that he's going to be going to school, and then he's told, then he comes and says, the teacher has said. This time he was not in the country. So now I had to go. So I go, me, I know my daughter has not. So I told the teacher, but my daughter cannot write a name if she was asleep. So let's be fair in this issue. So it's okay, it's okay. It's okay, mama, so and so. Let me not mention her. But you already knew it is, because it's, it's not the one who is here. It's the other one. So this, this teacher turned like this and said, they have written your name. Even this one has written your name. So the shock was on my daughter because it is her name that was where. So I felt like bursting. Because this teacher insisted, go and write also your name. She said, no, I won't write. I told her, she can't write. If she was asleep, she was asleep. By the time we were arriving at the principals, we were collecting a letter of being thrown out of the school. Two, two weeks go. So and by that time, my daughter was crying and was crying and was crying. But that was the first time I felt the ministration of the Holy Spirit tell me, keep quiet. Because I wanted to tell the principal something. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Yes, I wanted to. And then anyway, at that time, first of all, I knew I could move from that school the same day and take my child to another school. So what was the big deal? I did not talk. The Holy Spirit made sure I did not what? I did not talk. So when you get to that point is when you know that indeed you are changing into the character of Jesus Christ. So don't be quick to talk. If you go and you're being told by your boss, you are rubbish, this you didn't clean, just breathe in, apologize, and say, I'll do it better next time. Hallelujah. Aren't we changing? We are changing. We must get changed until we become like Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. We are praying today. Make us selfless like Jesus was selfless. We are praying today, Jesus. Remove all form of pride. All form of arrogance that does not glorify your holy name. We are praying, my Father and my God, we continue submitting to your will and to your way. Align our plans to your plans. Take us where you want us to go. Change us, Lord. Because when you change us, there are many who are going to come to Christ because they have seen our character. We shall be witnesses with our character. Even before we say we are born again, there shall be an affirmation and there shall be a testimony that I know this person is born again because they walk after the character of Jesus. I pray that Jehovah God, where we have gone wrong with pride, where even we have failed to get elevated because of pride, because we are not humble, we are praying, Lord, reverse now. We want to walk in your way. We want to walk in your will. All glory and honor to you, Jesus. We honor you, Father. We thank you, Jesus. Just take one minute and ask the Lord to change you, to mold you, to make you that which he wants you to be. The person who will be a true reflection of his son, Jesus Christ. Ask the Lord in humility that Jesus 
make me a vessel of honor. Make me a vessel that glorifies your holy name. Make me a vessel, Lord. Make me a vessel, Lord, of honor. Make me a vessel, Lord, of honor. Make me a vessel of honor, Jesus. I want to be more like you, that many may come to your light, to this light. Shari babazi kariyabazai. Rababashi tarimazan torubuyanda ramazan. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.